Okay, so how is everyone today? Alright. How was the sub? Uh, it was interesting. Good. I see. Okay, but but then he ended up doing it, huh? Good. Okay. So where where did the sub make it to? What was the last thing sub did? Okay, did you get to the point slope form of an equation? No, not specifically. Let's do it. Okay. <clears throat> so, in the first place, today is what? The 14th? 15th. 15th? Okay. So, if we have a line. If we have a line and you select any two points on the line, any two different points on the line, uh, and if you, if you measure their coordinates in the usual way by projecting down and measuring the x's and then projecting to the other axis and measuring the y's, uh, if, you, if you obtain the coordinates uh, to be x1, y1 for that point, and x2, y2 for the other point. We will refer to this distance and that distance. So this distance right here we'll call delta x which is frequently, uh, frequently referred to as the change in x. Uh, this will be, since we, na since we named this the first point, because it has indexes 1 and this one the second point, we'll say that delta x is x2 minus x1. <coughs> Note that I'm uh, not, not putting absolute value. Not putting absolute value. Uh, so if the horizontal measure is called delta x, then what, what are we going to call the vertical measure? Delta y. delta y. And then what's going to be the formula for delta y? y2 minus y1. And no, I am notably not using absolute value. <coughs> uh, with, with these measures, with these measures, the slope is m equal to delta y over delta x. So the colloquialism for this is that slope is rise over run. Slope is rise over run. <clears throat> OK. <clears throat> now, for the particular line that I happen to draw, there is a slope. That, that is to say that this line has a slope. But have a look at the formula, and I have a question for you. Can all lines, do all lines have slope? No, apparently not, because why would I be asking that question? <laughs> right? So, so, what lines don't have slope? Horizontal lines, horizontal ones do have slope. Vertical lines do not. Horizontal lines have a slope. What's their slope? Zero. Zero. So what I mean is that their slope exists and it is zero. Whereas a vertical line, its slope is non-existent. It doesn't have one. What from the formula is telling you that vertical lines, their slope doesn't exist? Right. Consider, consider if we had a vertical line, that we had two lines, we had two points directly on top of each other. Then how much are you, what is the run? How far are you, are you moving left and right? Zero. zero. 
that would mean that to compute the slope you'd have to divide by zero but this is undefined so vertical vertical lines cannot have slope so there's there's kind of four cases that you need to familiarize yourself with So lines that lines that look like this that are pointing in that direction, what's going to be true about their slope? Slope is negative. The slope's negative because if we always take the convention that we move to the right, then delta x will be positive when you move to the right. So delta x is some positive value. But as you move to the right, you have to move down. So delta y is negative. And as a result, the slope is negative. OK. <clears throat> how about, how about uh, this one? So again, can we move left to right on this line? We can, so it, so it does have a slope. It does have a slope. If we move to the right any amount, then delta x will be a positive value. What will delta y be? Zero. As a result, what's the slope of this, of this line? Zero. Zero. Okay, similarly, for this one, from any point on the line, you move to the right, a positive amount, <coughs> delta x is positive, and when you move right, how do you have to move vertically, up or down? You got to go up. As a result, delta y is positive. So delta x is positive and delta y is positive, so what's the slope then? Positive. The last possibility is this one. So in this case, in this case, how much can you move left and right? You cannot. So delta x is 0, and delta y, you know, that doesn't even really make sense. It could be positive or negative. Uh, but at any rate, what's going to be true about the slope? It's undefined. Okay, so those are the four, uh, four possibilities. Three of the possi possibilities come from the possible signs, negative, zero, and positive, and then one more when it doesn't exist at all. Okay, fine. <clears throat> so suppose that we have a line Suppose we have a line, and we know one of the points on the line to be x1, y1. So we're able to measure one point. And in addition to that, the extra piece of information that we know is that the slope is m. 
So we know two things about this line. We know, we know one particular point that it happens to pass through, and we also know the slope at which it passes through that point. So what we want is, is an equation that gives us this line. So this is, this is what the sub didn't do, right? He didn't get here. OK. So, so let's, imagine, let's imagine that we have any other point, any other point that's on the line. And we'll call it uh, x, y. OK. Then I'd like for you to compute uh, delta x. What's delta x? So if we call this the, the first point, so it'll be what? x minus x1. <coughs> and then what's delta y? y minus y1. And what we know, what we know is that m should be what? Well, in this picture, m is positive. But what is m with respect to these two things? Other, other way around. Yeah. Delta y over delta x. Which is to say that m is uh, y minus y1 <coughs> divided by x minus x1. But now I'm going to multiply both sides by, by the denominator so that we obtain m uh, times x minus x1 is y minus y1. And then the formula that everyone knows eventually, and many of you maybe saw before you even got here, is exactly this, but I'll switch the sides of the equation so that it looks like this y minus y1 is m x minus x1. So this equation is referred to because what the knowledge that you have is a point on the line, x1, y1, and also the, the slope of the line, and that's because that's the information that you are using. This is referred to as the point slope equation. OK. So I could give you an exercise. Say something like this. I could say, find the equation of the line through uh, through these two points. One of them is th uh, 13 comma 14 and the other one is 20 comma 17. So find the equation of the line through these points. Thirteen, yeah. Thirteen comma fourteen. So it's times like this when it's it's good to know the proper name of something, right? Even that's an that's an ancient saying. The beginning of wisdom is is finding out the proper name of something. What's the name of this formula that we have? Point slope. Point slope. Right. This is its name. And then what data have you been given? Ne nearly. So, so you, you, it's called point slope because you need a point and a slope. Or, and, and here in this exercise, I've given you a point and a point. So no notably, this is not called the point-point equation. It's called the point-slope equation. So what's lacking? It's the slope. The slope. OK. <clears throat> So we need the slope. We need the slope. So 
we need to compute delta x. Well, delta x, remember, is x2 minus x1. And from where will we pull x2 and x1? OK, so is that one x2 and that's x1? Oh, that one's x2 and that one's x1. No. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, you got to take you got to take the first coordinate from one point and the first coordinate from from the other point. Now I see some of y'all shaking your heads at my silly jokes, uh, but I challenge you to be a, a college algebra teacher for a while. <laughs> okay. So that's, that's uh, where those come from. So this will be, uh, what, 20 minus 13, which is 7. And then delta y. So specifically what I mean is that every semester that I teach this, I see if I don't carefully, and even if I do carefully draw these wiring diagrams, <coughs> this one to there, students still will take these two. They'll still do it. OK y2 minus y1. OK, so y2 minus y1. So now there's only two, there's only two values left. So, so probably uh, if student made it this far, they would, they would use these two values to do this. But there is yet one more mistake that can be made. What mistake can be made? Supposing that student recognizes that you can only use 14 and 17. What, what, what's the, yeah, switching it up. Because we selected this one to be x1, that means which one, uh, sorry, because we selected this one to be x2, which one now must be y2? That one, right? Good. Okay. Uh, what was it? No, seventeen. Seventeen minus fourteen is three. Okay. So what's the slope then? Seven over three. Three over seven. Right, because it's always delta y over delta x. So this is the other, another aspect of error that students make is because, tip, because x comes before y in the alphabet, that you, you write this one first. Okay, so this one is now above that one. And then when you go to write the ratio, oh, 7 over 3. No, 3 over 7, right? Good. So we have the slope. And what was the name of that equation? The point slope. Okay, so, so there's two points, which means we have to make a choice. What's the right choice to make? Which one are we supposed to use? It, it doesn't matter. It can't matter. It can't matter because, because uh, imagine looking at a, a, imagine looking at this line right here, if I were to take this, this point right here and slide it a little bit further and then measure the new delta x and the new delta y, what would be the new slope? It'd have to be the same as before. What if I slide them to be really close, not on top of each other, but just really close? Then what will the slope be? The same, right? The, the sameness of the slope. The sameness of the slope is why it doesn't matter which point you select. Okay, so what, what, what I want to avoid is that you get to the quiz and that's the first time you realize that you have to make a choice and then suddenly you have a crisis of confidence. It doesn't matter which one you select. So because it doesn't matter which one you select, you should select whatever, whichever one will make the arithmetic easier. So if one of them had a bunch of fractions in it, choose the other one, right? So I'm going to choose this one because the numbers are smaller. So y minus y1 is m times x minus x1, so y minus 14 is 3 sevenths x minus 13. 
and then the typical instruction on these is to multiply out, collect like terms, and solve for y. So I'll do that. So distributing the 3 sevenths gives 3 sevenths x, and then minus 39 sevenths, because 3 times 13 is 39. Add 14 to both sides. Okay, then now we need to combine that fraction. So that would be uh, minus 39 over 7 and then plus 98 over 7. Now I've got them both over, over 7s there. So how much is that? Uh, 59. Any question about this one? <clears throat> Any question about it? Yes? Would it not have been easier to uh, not move the 14 and just uh, multiply everything by 7? Sure, you could multiply everything by 7. Uh, that, in, that, in the end, will include multiplying the y by 7. Okay. So that by the time you solve for y, you, you're going to divide by 7 again. <clears throat> But that would have been a permissible line of reasoning. Other questions? OK. <clears throat> so a remark. About parallel and perpendicular. So, to use parallel in a sentence <laughs> is that a platonic train track, if there could be such a thing, uh, the rails are parallel. Perfectly straight, always a fixed distance apart, never intersecting. Okay, <clears throat> so what I mean to say is Here I'm drawing a line. So on your, your own picture, uh, I'd like for you to draw a second line, which is parallel to the first line. OK. So those two lines are parallel, okay, running side by side, and they're, they're not going to intersect. Okay, okay. So suppose this one has the formula y is m1x plus b1, that the red one has that formula, and the green one has this formula, y is m2x plus b2. So in the first place, from these formula, f formulas, you should be able to tell me, what is, this, what is the slope of the red line? It's m1. Okay. And what's the slope of the green line? m2. Okay. And did the, did the sub talk about what the b means? Okay. Well, in that case, what would you get, what would, what would happen to the red uh, equation if you substituted in x is 0? Then what would the new equation read? If you, if you replaced x with 0, the new equation would read y is b1. Okay? So then substituting in x is 0, what does that mean? That's the y-intercept. So what this is, this is the y-intercept. That's what it is. <coughs> That is to say, this value right here is B1. Okay. 
Okay, so how about that? Uh, we're kind of off the, off the track <laughs> of talking about parallel for a moment. That was a, that was a <laughs> train joke. <laughs> okay, so then this B1, is this B1 positive or negative? <laughs> Okay, I heard, I heard negative, I heard positive. So which one is it? Positive. It's positive. Why is B1 a positive value? Because, because it's above its origin, right? Okay, similarly, uh, where is B2? It's right there. So again, I haven't drawn any scale on, on the axis, so you can't tell me the, the magnitude of the B's, but you can tell me their sign. What is the sign of B2? N negative. Okay, how about, how about the signs of M1 and M2? Positive. They're both positive. They're both positive because you can, you can see that these lines are sloping up. So what's going to be the algebraic condition to determine whether or not two lines are parallel? Uh, they have all the same signs. The same, same slope. Same slope. So parallel me in, thi in this drawing means same slope. Uh, which is to say M1 is M2. Okay, so here's a, here's a nice consequence of this definition that is a little disturbing the first time a student hears it. Uh, how about the red line? Is the red line parallel to the red line? Yes. Why is the red line parallel to the red line? Because it has the same slope as itself. Right? So line, the same line is parallel to itself. Okay. So, believe it or not, this, is, this drawing and condition is not the only manner in which uh, a line, t that two lines can be parallel. What's another manner? Another situation in which two lines can be parallel. So that includes this one. So the only difference between these two, because we've established that M1 is M2, the only difference is that in this drawing, B1 is not the same as B2. But we could make it be that way, but then it would be unintelligible. There's another situation, another possibility to have parallel lines. Th that's. That, so that's somewhat included in here. So same line is still included in here. So, so you're, this is kind of a mathematician, you know, you'll give me a, probably an eye roll, okay? So um, let me ask a pointed question. Do all lines have slope? No. no. Not all lines have slope. So what's the other possibility for lines to be parallel? They both have no slope, and ha so what, what would, what's a good word to describe lines that have no slope? Vertical. vertical. Two vertical lines can, are also parallel. So that line and this line. So the red and green are parallel, so they're both vertical. So what is the equation? What 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 is the, the general form of an equation of a line that's vertical? X is some constant. So x is, say, a1. So from this picture, you should be able to tell me the, the sign of a1. It's positive. Why is the sign of a1 positive? Because it's to the, to the, very good. And then this is some other value, x is a2. And again, A is positive, but you can even conclude further that, uh, sorry, A2 is positive, but you can also conclude that A2 is more than A1. Okay, good. Any question about this? Parallel? Next.
perpendicular. No discussion about parallel would be complete without a discussion about perpendicular. Okay, so then what does perpendicular mean? Okay. Okay, good. Intersecting and also at that intersection, it's a right angle. Okay. Okay, so now what's the condition for perpendicular? Is it that the slopes are the same? <laughs> okay, good. So, so in particular, uh, this, is, this is what must be true, is that the product of the slopes, m1 times m2, you take the two slopes and compute their product, you have to get negative one. And then the way that your, your book usually writes it uh, is in this way, that m1 is negative one over m2 or something like that. And yes, frequently that phrase is bandied around negative reciprocal. Okay, so just by, just by way of example, suppose that, suppose that the slope, uh, we had uh, a line with slope, y is, or we had the line y is 3 halves x plus uh, 13 over 14. Okay, then what's the slope of this line? 3 over 2. So the slope of this line is 3 over 2. What's the, what's the slope perpendicular to that line? Negative 2 over 3. Negative 2 over 3. Because you first reciprocal, that is to say, if it's a fraction, you, you, you swap the numerator and denominator. If it's not a fraction, you write 1 over. Okay, then you negate. So it's two, it's two things. Reciprocal and negate. So the perpendicular slope is negative two thirds. Okay, but I left myself a spot here because this is not the only manner in which two lines can be perpendicular. What's the other one? Horizontal and vertical. So now, a second ago we said that vertical lines have, the, have equations like x is uh, a, so that's fine. What kind of, what kind of uh, equation will this one have? Yeah. So some constant y some constant x. Any question about this one? What time is it? Okay, so that's right. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> Good. So parallel and and perpendicular. So uh, I'm going to mention a problem, and then we have to move on to something else. We won't have time to completely solve it. So here's a here's a fun problem. <clears throat> Is find the equation of the line through the midpoint of points A and B. So it's got to go through the midpoint and it has to do so with slope perpendicular to the line segment. from A to B. OK, so I haven't given you any specific points, okay, because we're not going to have enough time to do it. I, wanna, I want you to consider the concept. Okay. So suppose I, give, I, I draw for you such an A and such a B. So there's point A, and here's point B. So we did a problem a, a few minutes ago that was find the equation of the line through A and B for a specific A and a specific B. That was, that was the first one that we did. So this question is different. What point, what point is the line supposed to go through? The midpoint of A and B, right? The, the midpoint of the line segment with, from A to B. So here's the line segment from A to B. Then you could use the midpoint formula to find the midpoint. Okay, that is to say that what the coordinates of the midpoint so we'll ref refer to this as point M. Mm, so I'm gonna make it big, tall, pointy M so it doesn't get confused with slope M. Uh, what is going to be the x coordinate of the midpoint? Do you, I don't want a specific answer, I want a conceptual answer. So the midpoint formula doesn't have subtraction in it. Doesn't have subtraction. Right. Okay, so so each one of these A and B are somewhere horizontally. Right. We, we could, we, I could draw an axis and we could measure, okay. So the, the horizontal coordinate of the midpoint is the average horizontal coordinate. So if whatever this, one, this one's x coordinate is and whatever that one's x coordinate is, you add them together and divide by two. That's how you get the x coordinate of this one. Similar for y coordinate. So the midpoint is the average value. Okay, so that's the point that we want the line to pass through. So does that mean the red line is the line we're looking for because that's a line passing through M? So how is it, how is it, how are we supposed to, how is the line supposed to pass through M? Perpendicularly, right? So, so the line that we're looking for is going to do something like this. So to solve such an exercise, if I gave you a specific A and a specific B, the first order of business, the first order of business <coughs> would be uh, to find M. So find M with midpoint. Okay. 
what would be the second order of business? So let's name, I'll call that delta x and this delta y. So we'll find that slope. We'll find delta x and delta y. And then what's the slope of the line we're actually looking for, supposing we have delta x and delta y? It's the negative reciprocal of the, of, of the slope that would, that the, of the red one, right? <coughs> Find the perpendicular slope to this one. <coughs> Interesting. Any question about this one? Okay. So this particular line that I happen to draw, um, uh, is, it's, is, is the blue line, does it have negative slope or positive slope or zero slope? Negative slope. The one I happen to draw has negative slope. Okay, good. <coughs> so now we're going to try and use lines to talk about real world problems at least a little bit. So this is called something like linear models. Okay, so we'll just jump right in. Uh, lots of, lots of um, service goods and things like that, uh, the pricing is structured linearly in the following kind of sense. Um, so the first exercise we'll do is we'll, we'll say the following. Say that a cell phone company offers a plan with uh, a $34 fixed cost. So that means that without regard to whether or not you use your cell phone, it's going to cost $34. Okay, so fixed cost of $34 and uh, the cost of usage is going to be uh, 5 cents per minute. Anyway, this is the example in the book. That sounds kind of ridiculous to me, but whatever. <clears throat> Uh, cell phone company offers a plan with uh, with fixed cost thirty four and with with uh, per minute cost of five cents. So let's use C to denote the cost. I'll use C to denote the cost, and uh, I'm not going to use M to denote the number of minutes, which would be pretty good. But in our hearts and minds, M at least around lines usually means slope. So I'm going to avoid that. And rather I'm going to say t or something. So this is time in minutes. And this is cost in dollars. So now what we want is a formula, a model, that models, that, that gives an equation that relates c and t together and will tell you the cost C for the, for the number of minutes T that you use a cell phone. So what should the cost be? Okay, so now let's think about this, uh, 34. Is this a, let's try and think about why this is reasonable. So imagine for a moment that you used no minutes on your cell phone. Uh, what, is that, what does that mean algebraically in for where this equation is concerned? That t is 0 and that, c, and that c is 34. OK, that's in agreement with the story. Suppose that, suppose that you used your cell phone for exactly one minute. 
then that would mean you'd pay $34 for the privilege of carrying around your cell phone and you'd pay five cents for that one minute. Okay, and that's what this is saying. $34 plus five cents. And furthermore, let's consider, <clears throat> what, it, what are the units for this 34? Dollars, right? This is in dollars. What are the units for this 0 0.05? No, it's for the 0 0.05. It's 0 0.05. It's 0 0.05 dollars per minute. Per minute. So, so this thing, this this number is in dollars per minute. And then what are the units of t? Minutes. So now have a look at these, at these units. If you cancel the units, what are you left with? No. Dollars. So this is dollars plus dollars. So, so it makes sense from a dimensional analysis point of view. Okay, that's good. Very good. Well, let's say that this is plan one, and then there's another plan where you have, uh, say, a $40 fixed cost. And you have $0 0.04 dollars uh, uh, per minute. So now what's the model? Yeah, I agree. Okay, so two different, two different uh, models. So the last thing that I want you to see, to think about over the weekend, is the following. Suppo suppose we plot both of these lines. What when we plot, when we plot these lines, what will this number represent? Not a, not a y-intercept because there's no y's. It'll be the c-intercept. Okay, and what will this represent? The slope. So one of these lines starts high. Which one starts high? This one, right? This one starts high. But, and one of them slopes, slopes more steeply. Which one slopes more steeply? The top one. So I just need 10 more seconds to get my point across. So one of them starts low and slopes a lot, or at least more than the other one anyway. The other one starts less high, or even higher, but slopes less. My question to you is, do you observe that these lines are intersecting? What is the meaning of that intersection? That's the number of minutes where both of these plans would be the same. Even though one of them, even though one of them, they have different fixed costs and different costs per minute, at exactly this time, this is when the cost is the same. So if you planned on using less minutes than this time, it would be better for you to get the red plan. And if you planned on using more minutes, it would be better for you to get the green plan. And we'll talk more about it next time. Have a nice weekend.